Hello everyone! It is so good to see you again. Um, I'm so excited to join this meditation with you guys on Fridays with Faith and I just love being here. Um, right now we're at in the Cape. So this is our Cape Cod house. Um, Hello, Mom, and hello, Auntie Becky, and hello, Mary Mentz, and then hello, Debros711. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing so good. Dad. Oh, hello, Faith. Good morning. Oh, I can't see my eyes. Hang on, I gotta sit back a little bit. Good morning, Nancy. And Margie. Hi, Margie. I can barely see I know, I'm trying to read though at the same time. Hi, Deb. And Kyle. Good morning, Becky and Mom. Hmm. And Stephanie. And Maddie's auntie. And Susie P. What does morn mean? Morn is shorthand for morning. Morn. Oh. Sometimes people go morn. Hi, Lena. And Kay McDonald. Retired 1024. And of course, Cape Gamma. And that's Jackie. And. Good morning, Faith. You're our little guiding light. You are so certainly the guiding light in this family. Thank you. Morning, Jackie and Hello, Beth. Susie. Martha. How are you guys doing? How's everyone doing? Happy Friday. Hey, Walter. That's my uh, that's my college roommate, Mike McGowan. Hello. Hi, Michael P. Yeah, that's all right. I can't hear it. Morning, Allie and Maureen and Beth. Hello, Allie. Fire is, fire is strong today. Right? It's yeah. a lot cooler today, too. Uh-huh. How are you? How do you like to see? Are you good? Ah, yeah. Who else is here? Um, H-P-A-G-L-P. I think it's pronounced H -pal. The, two of us, the two of us together are great. Huh? Yeah. And hey, XOXO Allie. Mama. XOXO Mia. XOXO and Jen and Oliver. Mama See, that's Mia. Jen and that's our cat, Oliver. Hi. Good morning. Help, help. So, yeah, we can listen to the fire today. Maybe you can hear it. It's such a rainy day. Wet, raw. I still might get out there, at least for a walk, right? You yeah. Want to go for a walk? Sure. After school? Yeah. And it is almost time to meditate. What, what do you want what type of meditation you want to do? Um What do you want to focus on? Ooh. Huh. What do we usually focus on when we meditate, Faith? Being aware. Of what? The physical Sensation of breath. Yeah, that's good. Yes. What is that? Good morning, Eva. What does that mean? Uh, love the roll call. Maureen, uh, Maureen knows that I have difficulty seeing in the morning. And so I really oh, butcher some of these names. Uh, Heidi is tell. Oh, so H P A. I can't read it that well, but Tidy. that's Heidi. Yeah, I can read it. That's her real name. She was just telling us that's her name. Ah. So now you can say good morning, Heidi, when you see that. Ah. Uh, so yes, we're going to focus on the breath. We're going to anchor ourselves in our practice, and then we're going to follow our process. Uh-huh. Right? And what is our process? We start, bless you. 
Bless you. We start with a light focus on the breath. And then what happens? We usually get... Distracted. Mm -hmm. We're distracted by so many things, but what do we usually get distracted by? We call it our sets. So our sensations. sensations. Yep, what else? Emotions. Emotions, which is the thought and the feeling that create uh -huh. the feeling, right? That emotion. And then what else? What's the T? Thoughts and thinking. Thoughts and thinking. And then what's the last S? Sounds. Sounds. Usually a sound will distract us, kind of hijack our attention, and then all of a sudden we're judging that noise and saying, what's going on? I'm trying to meditate. And then you notice that you're not in the moment and that you're not being very kind to not only the noise but to yourself. So it's a great way to learn. What do you do once you become aware of that? You now have a choice. And what is the choice? To become focused again. Become focused again. And each time you do that, whether that's during a meditation, it strengthens your attention for when you're not meditating. So say you're doing your homework and you start doing your homework and then about five minutes in you get distracted and you think you're hungry, but you've already just eaten and you're saying, oh, you become aware, oh, I am distracted. And then you come back to your homework. And each time you do that, you get your homework done faster, you get everything in your life becomes a little bit more focused. So what do you say we meditate? Yeah. Do that. Morning, Jane. This time I. And Jen Kelly and uh, Christine Sheedy and Eva is here. And Jane Molo Singh. And Kelly Hand is hand. Jane Molo Singh. Oh, oh. All sorry. right. So let us get started. Um, Why don't we find our comfortable? Are you comfortable uh, in, in the Hayden seat? This time I'm staying near the camera and almost right next to Dad. Yeah. Instead okay. of going behind him. Yeah. It's like we really are meditating together. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get comfortable. We'll gently close our eyes. No. <laughs> and let's just start by making sure we're comfortable. Let's take our first deep breath in together. And exhale through the mouth. <sighs> do that again we'll take another deep breath in through the nose really let it fill up your lungs hold it at the top and it feels good to hold on but sometimes we hold on to things that we don't need so we let it go through the mouth again really push the air out this time take one more deep breath in through the nose hold it just for a moment and then lightly exhale through the nose I want you to notice if you are really relaxed as you let your breath go back to its natural pattern. Let the shoulders soften on the exhales. Soften around the eyebrows, the jaw. Each exhale is an opportunity to let go, to relax. And as we continue our breathing, we'll use the breath as our anchor for today's meditation. But before we do that, let's work a little bit on centering ourselves, we'll ask ourselves our three questions. We've gone seven weeks now. We're going into our last week together next week. We have a bunch of opportunities in this next week to get really clear on our intentions, what we want, and how we can help. So in order to do that, let's take a moment and just ask ourselves a few of these questions silently. We'll ask in our own mind. We'll notice what arises when we ask the question. And then we practice non-judgment. We try not to judge the answers. And then we ask it again. And we'll see if we can peel back some of the layers of these conditionings that we have. Just by asking ourselves, who am I? So go ahead, silently ask yourself, who am I a few times?
So you may notice a few times of asking that question that there's a bunch of stereotypical answers that pop up. Some of me that identifies with the positions that I own, the possessions, positions that I hold rather, the possessions that I own. And those are threads of who I am. But what happens if you just keep asking the questions? See if you can go a little bit deeper. Who am I? let that go what do I want what do I really want to see happen for me in my own life in these next few weeks months and just recognize that who am I and what do I want are really guiding a majority of our life's choices so it's important I think to get really clear on what it is you want so then you can use it to help others. We spend so much of our day helping other people, putting out other people's fires. And it may almost seem almost un-American to focus on ourselves, it's too selfish. If we don't focus on ourselves, it will be no good for anyone else. So what is it that I really want? And the last question, what is my dharma? Or what is my purpose? I wholeheartedly believe we all have a unique purpose on this planet. We can do things that no one else can do. And that's our gift. And as I often say to Faith and Hayden, I don't care what it is you do with your life. As long as you find something that you love to do, that you're passionate about, that lights you up from inside, and then you use that to help. So go ahead and ask yourself, how can I help? How can I help? Take a deep breath in through your nose now. Really let it fill up the lungs to capacity. Go ahead, let it out through the mouth. I want you to detach from the questions. As my teacher, David G. likes to say, let the universe work out any of those little details. Let's turn our attention back to the breath. Let's do our mindful push-ups. By lightly focusing on the breath and noticing where we physically feel it in the body, we'll make that the anchor for today's meditation. We'll practice a little while focusing on the breath and then we'll close with our sutra statements for the week of Sat Chit Ananda. So let's bring all of our awareness, let's settle that energy right there at the tip of our nose. And so on that next inhale, just even asking yourself what's there. Can you feel temperature? Is it cool, warm? Is there a scent to it? Is there a vibrational quality in the nose that holds your attention? Or at the very least, you probably feel that warm air releasing, so you feel the pressure letting go. Or if today is a little bit of a struggle for you, just go ahead and place your attention right at the tip of your nose, and as you're breathing in, just simply think the word in, and as you're breathing out, you think the word out. So it does two things. It holds your attention right there at the tip of your nose, but at the same time, it stabilizes your attention so you're not so quickly distracted. (laughs) 
keeping that energy down. We'll focus on the chest area, same idea. Next inhale, what's there? Feel the sense of expansion. Feel the lungs fill. Notice the body sink a little bit in the seat on the exhale. We're really just trying to tap into that relaxation quality and allowing ourselves to be in this moment, to cease our demand on this moment. So you can think rise as you breathe in and fall or letting go as you breathe out. Again, that adds a little stabilization to the focus so you're not so quickly swept away. At the same time, it helps you also feel to use your body as a barometer, to feel what that's like to let go, to feel what that's like to settle. And then finally, we'll bring it to the abdomen. So as you breathe in here, just see if you can feel anything, any sense of expansion. Maybe you can feel it in the lower part of your back. But again, what's there? Is there pressure in the sides? As you exhale, can you feel that sense of dissolving, opening? I go to mantra here. Breathing in, I just simply think the word let, and breathing out, I think go. So let go. Sometimes as I'm thinking let and then go, this wave of relaxation spreads down the torso, helping me to relax a little bit more into the seat. Go ahead, take a moment, figure out where you want to place your awareness for the remainder of our meditation, either in the nostrils, the chest, or the abdomen. I want you to pick one. We'll lightly focus our attention there. And maybe you'll just get one breath before you're distracted. Or maybe you get two or three, or maybe you'll string together four or five. But if you're anything like me, it's not going to take long before your mind drifts away to our sets, to our S, our sensations in the body, some restlessness, struggle, some emotion, a thought and a feeling that makes you feel good or irritable, or maybe it's a thought or some random story will start going off in my mind. I'm not even aware I'm telling it. Or maybe it's a sound, it'll be a pop from the fireplace. Something will take my attention away. And so whenever I become aware of any version or any variation of those distractions, I just want you to notice it, become aware. Practice accepting that it's happening because it's happening. There's no need to deny it. We practice letting it go by coming back to the breath. And again, each time we make that circle, each time we become distracted, become aware, make the choice to come back to the breath, we're strengthening our attention to help us for when we're not meditating. So we can be more focused later in the day. So we can notice when we're distracted by the story of our mind. And we can cut that emotional hook and keep coming back to the present moment. So I wanna keep meditating in this way. I'm gonna keep an eye on the time. And so when you hear me ring the bowl, We'll still continue to sit. I want to finish the week out by reading our sutra statements from The Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire, book by Deepak Chopra, one of my favorites. So 
so we can go into the weekend a little bit more relaxed and centered. still closed 
Let's let go of our practice and just rest easy. Close out another week of doing the work. Sense of gratitude for everyone that shows up and practices with us. And really laying down the foundation for a continued practice. Let's close out with our sutra statements of Sat Chit Ananda. So you remember that Sat is truth, Satya, truth. Chit is knowledge, consciousness. Sat Chit. Ananda means bliss. So knowledge, truth equals bliss. And so you can silently repeat Sat Chit Ananda after every sutra statement. So imagine that you are centered and totally at peace. And you can silently think Sat Chit Ananda. Imagine that you are looking at the world with knowingness and peace. Sat Chit Ananda. Imagine that all beings are your equal. Sat Chit Ananda. Imagine that you are not affected by flattery or criticism. Sat Chit Ananda. Imagine that you're focused on the journey and not the destination. Sat, chit, ananda. Imagine that in your presence, all hostility is overcome by a profound wave of peace. Sat, chit, ananda. Imagine that you're detached from the outcome. Chit Ananda. Imagine that a deeply profound ocean of calm exists in you that's not affected by any turbulence. Sat Chit Ananda. And imagine love radiates from you like the light from a bonfire. Sat Chit Ananda. Imagine that you're in love with everything and everybody. Imagine that you are intoxicated with love. Sat Chit Ananda. Imagine that the right answers come to you spontaneously whenever you're confronted by any questions. Sat Chit Ananda. And imagine that you know exactly what to do in every given situation. Sat, Chit, Ananda. So go ahead and start to deepen your awareness back into the space. You can start to move around, roll your head. Whatever you need to do, and when it's comfortable, go ahead and gently open your eyes. Namaste. Can you namaste, everyone? Namaste. Oh. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Faith. Mm-hmm. No problem. No problem. Let me know if anyone has any questions at all. Remember, part of this is to be able to stabilize our attention, meditate for later. So if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Thanks, Michael and Kelly, thank you. Happy birthday. Whose birthday is that? Lady, how do you say it? I can't uh, say it, is it I? Lady Isharu. Isharu, Isharu. Happy Isaru. birthday.
Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. MS572. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Say hi to the kids, Jen and Oliver. Have a wonderful weekend. Barb, does that say Barb? Thank oh. you, Barb. Oh. You're Have welcome. a great weekend, Peggy. Thank you for yeah. showing up, everyone. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mom. Mommy. And Beth. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Cape Gamma. Cape Gamma. Lovely practice this morning. Namaste, Faith and Andy. Thank you, Beth. And that's Karen. Hi. So nice to see Faith. Tasha. Happy birthday, Tasha. That's easier. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Eva. Happy birthday, Tasha. Maureen, have a great weekend, buddy. The fire master. I love the fire. I'm going to keep this going all day. Have a great weekend, Christine. And Kay. And Laura. And. Oh, I'm so psyched your husband joined. Yes! Out there in the beautiful, wow. beautiful part of New England, there in Wolverham. That's so great. Uh, Mary, come back on Monday. Yes. Intentional Kindness Day. Oh, thank you. Spread kindness all day, all weekend. Thank you, Joyce. And Jabraz, thank you. That's Jackie. Oh. Thank you, Jackie and Laura. Thank you. Dan wants to know why. Why? Wants to know why what? Why? Dan wants to know why. Back it. Loved it. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I love why? Danny. You know what to do to Danny for me. Right, Faith? Yeah. Get him good. <laughs> Get him good, right? Yeah. Thanks, Sonia. Thank you. Retired 1024. Have a great weekend. Noreen, peace. Kelt, right back at you, peace. Have a great weekend. It's interesting, when we're doing the statements, it's interesting depending on where I am, which one registered. Focus on the journey, not the destination. And detach from the outcome. You can still have a focus of what you want, but if you detach from the out outcome, I, I sometimes find that more happens that I wasn't so narrowly focused on. Just why? I love you, Danny. I can't wait to hug you again. Really strong hugs. All right, you wanna say anything else? Um, um, I don't think so. No? There is one more thing. One more thing. She just said, just why. But, oh yeah, that's Becky. Danny's like, just why? Like, my buddy, Danny, your uncle, Danny. And he's like, just why? My well, uncle he said, Danny. The, the guy that sends, uh, you know, the, compa the compassionate Daniel. The compassionate Daniel. <laughs> he's awesome. I love you, Danny. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. We will do this one more week so we can learn to deal with our in-laws and our uncles. <laughs> we'll do a week of compassion, right? Want to do a week of compassion next week? Sure, yeah. All week? All right. That's namaste. Oh, namaste, everyone. Namaste. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for coming. Thank you.